In today's video, I'm showing off this turn-based multiplayer setup I have in Godot, and the best part is it doesn't use a dedicated server. So if we launch it, uh, this is for my game Fight Poker, I can push play, I'll push this mode where it creates a match, so it says waiting, and it's going to go through successful login, and it'll try to connect to someone else, and it'll try that twice, and if it doesn't work, it will make its own game. And then once it gets to waiting for another player, if anyone else starts the does the same process so i'll launch it on my other computer here and push play they will be able to find this game and you see player that string connected and now we're in the game and for mine this is a poker game so i could play this eight and i'll put it in the attack and then it says waiting and i can no longer interact with anything and then on my other computer i could drag there, I dragged in an eight on that side. I can play a jack. This guy has a three. Put it over here. And then play continues like this, where once one side is able to go, the other side gets locked out and it goes back and forth. So the way we create and find the lobbies and do matchmaking without using a local area network or LAN is we use the Epic Online Services, which is a set of tools developed by Epic Games and one of the main uses for it is that you can connect to their server and use that to create peer-to-peer -peer connections for your own game. It's completely free, and I'll show you how it works in here. And I'll cover this in more detail at the end of the video, but right here is our, for the gist of it, this is our onConnect login callback. So in ready, we initialize the EOS SDK, we do some logging stuff, and then we come down here, and once we're connected, we check if the login was successful, if it was, we print successful, and then we get this timer, we wait a second, and we search for a lobby, and if it returns false, which means it didn't find a lobby, we try again, and it does the same thing, except we wait a variable amount of time, just so that if two people launch at the same time, they can still connect to each other, and if we don't find a lobby the second time, we make a game, we call create lobby, and we do a little await for that. And once a lobby has been created and someone else joins, we instantiate up here our game scene, which takes us over to this. And this code is using C sharp, but you could do this in GD script as well. So if we go into here, this is our game code. And we have this public bool is server, which is set by the EOS or the login for multiplayer. And then we have my turn, which when we set it, we can set it and it also hides or makes waiting label visible, and that's just that waiting display. So then if we go down here, we have our code for on hand clicked. So this is when we click in this area 2D for our hand. And when we go over here, if it's not our viewport, we ignore it. Or if it's not our turn, we ignore it. So as long as it's not our turn, we cannot do anything. And if event is event mouse button mouse event, and it's pressed, so if the event that triggered the area 2D was us clicking our mouse, we find for each card in there that we can pick and cards determine whether they can be picked or not from these two signals, mouse enter and mouse exit. So any card that the mouse has entered but hasn't exited, we can pick. And we pick the one with the highest Z index. So that means the, the top facing card. And if we do end up picking a card, we call this pick card function on the card we just got, and we remove that card from the hand. When we do that, when we pick card, it puts it into this variable we have up here, and from there, when we place it in one of the four spots on the board, it'll call one of these functions, place card front block, attack, back block, or back attack. And what this does is it sets the player front, and it calls it for ourselves. We also send an RPC to the opponent, telling them to place it on theirs, their side of the board for front block as well. We set my turn equal to false, and we call RPC enemy turn, which sets their turn equal to true. And that's the same for all four of these. And the way this code works in practice is whoever is the server, when they create the game, they start as their turn. They can pick a card as long as their turn, and when they place it on the board, it sends the card data to the opponent through an RPC, it then it sends an RPC telling them to switch it to their turn, and then we place the card on our board and set our turn to false. 
but you wouldn't have to do cards. You could do any sort of setup where you have a my turn variable, which you flip back and forth whenever you send an RPC. All right, let's go over the Epic online service code. So this code here allows us to connect to Epic Games developer website, which allows us to use their EOS features. And the one that we're using here is the lobby system. So we can create and join lobbies. When we join lobbies, we connect to their server and they will automatically find someone else that has created a lobby. So this means that we can have different networks and it even works cross-platform and people can play with each other. Now I could go over all this code and how it works and also how to set up the Epic Online Services website. However, I already have a video covering that linked here. If you wanna see how to build this for your own game, click the video. And until next time, see ya.